So, today's a bit of a special day. Ah, oh. oh, yeah. It's a bit of a special day today because I finally... I finally manned up to interview with my favorite coffee shop here in Northern Virginia. And <clears throat> as you guys can tell by the title of, of the video, from the lowest place, nah, from the lowest place to the highest place. And, and you may ask, AJ, what, what do you mean by that? But pretty much all throughout my life, God has placed me to start from the lowest place and start my way up from there and it's kind of like all the figures in the Bible if you see Joseph in the book of Genesis or King David um, in Psalms and in the book of 1st Kings and 2nd Kings and even Moses, you see that God puts them in a place of being uncomfortable and in a situation where it may be unconventional for most. And I think <clears throat> it's been like that in my life as well, where I go down this unconventional path. Or God places me at the lowest place to start there. Back in high school, as I graduated from college, when most people went to college, I couldn't because of my immigration status. Um, because of my immigration status and also just financially, I wasn't capable. So where, where did I work? I worked at Chick-fil-A. I worked at other restaurants. And then slowly I started going to school. And then I graduated and I reached um, this goal of mine to become a software engineer. And I'm so thankful for that opportunity for the opportunity that I have now, but I have another dream, which is to one day own a coffee shop. And to own a coffee shop, you either need a lot of capital, meaning you need a lot of money, or, and this can go hand in hand, it can be and, or, and, or. Or, you know, you need to market yourself and, and have a brand. And one of the reasons why I wanted to continue YouTubing and showing my face on the internet is being able to be a brand. To one day uh, create a coffee brand <laughs> but in the process of that I thought to myself while I'm working my nine-to-five also gain some experience in the coffee industry so that's why today I'm going to my co uh, favorite coffee shop 
here in Northern Virginia. It's called Foundation Coffee Roaster in Fairfax. And I'm interviewing so, you know, I can, I can work for them. Whether it's as a barista, I'm sure <coughs> we had to play a lot of moving parts at coffee shops. You're not just a barista, but you have to be in the cashier. Maybe you may need to help in the back. Whatever that means, uh, just being able to gain that exposure and experience of being in the coffee industry. And I already explained in a previous video why, at least I believe I did, explaining why I want to own a coffee shop one day. Uh, if you guys want to hear it again, leave a comment below, but I don't want to drag this section of the video out, so I won't. But yeah, I'm on my way to the interview. And let's see, it's probably going to be a lot of behavioral uh, interview questions, just asking, you know, for my experience in the past in the hospitality industry and, you know, other questions, I believe. But we'll see. We'll see what they're going to ask. That's Foundation Coffee Roaster right there. I just finished my interview with them and it went well. It really wasn't it really wasn't an interview. It seems like they wanted me from the get-go and I mean part of the reason is because I kind of already had a relationship that was formed with them because I go to Foundation Coffee pretty often whether it was like for work I just do work there, grab coffee, or whether it be... No, that's that's mainly it. Grab coffee, work from there at times, especially when it was still kind of COVID time-ish. Yeah, and next Saturday will be my first day working there. And one thing that I do enjoy about Foundation is that Foundation is owned by Christians as well and while I was talking to them it seemed like it seemed as if their mission in life was very much aligned with mine because the reason why I want to own a coffee shop one day and start a coffee brand is really you know to be an economy of light and there's no reason to start a business if you know this world and this life is just for me and my family. Then at that point, then at that point, I can just continue on with my Walmart job, see it through for the next 14, 15 years. My goal in life is for God's word, the good news of Jesus Christ to be spread all throughout the world and if the economy of light that I make can be helped for missions and evangelism, you know, what greater way? So one coffee shop will not do. It can, it can create a community, but it's not going to create enough net profit for anything. What needs to happen is there needs to be a brand. There needs to be a brand like Starbucks, like Blue Bottle, that, that can support, uh, you know, this this reason and purpose. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. I'm gonna go wash my car. We'll see what else I do for the rest of the day. I'm currently at Annandale, and we're. My friend and I were trying the L and L Hawaiian barbecue. It's known in Hawaii, and it recently came to Virginia here in Annandale. But I feel like the price the price is too high for how much they give you, 
and just the quality of the food. Here, let me show you guys. Let's see how it is. Let's see. Hello. So this is actually two days from the clip that you just saw. So I did go to L and L Hawaiian barbecue. It's in Annandale, Virginia. And my friend and I agree that we would give the place a solid, at best, four out of 10. If you're going there for drinks, not bad. Just, you know, you know, drinks are drinks. But if you're going there for the food, one, it's pricey. Two, it's not great. We had this mixed barbecue uh, combo where it gave us marinated chicken and beef. The beef kind of looked like Korean LA Galbi, which is marinated beef um, that Koreans uh, specialize in. But LNL Hawaiian apparently it's like a franchise in Hawaii, Hawaii, that's kind of like the Hawaii version of McDonald's. So to begin with, the expectation should have been low, but from what I've heard before, you know, people do hype it up. Maybe it's because it's exclusively, you know, um, sold the food is sold in Hawaii, but only a couple of states might have L and L Hawaiian barbecue. Anyways, wasn't good. the The meat was it smelled. I don't know if you guys can tell if meat smelled or not, but this meat smelled for both the chicken and the beef. And my friend who ate, you know, my best friend who ate with me, he was like the best. The best thing was the rice and that's kind of bad if the if the best thing that we ate there was the rice that's not good there was something else that i wanted to share but give me just a second so i wanted to share one last couple of things uh today i hit leg day but the day I actually shot, I hit chest. My goal with lifting is, again, because it's marathon prep season and this coming Sunday is marathon, my goal for lifting weights is to maintain strength or maybe get a little stronger. And I've, you know, I've been successfully doing so. Uh, so benching 225 for reps of six. That's pretty good in my opinion. Um, and yeah, just, you know, just trying to be consistent. And, you know, this book kind of talks about this whole part of habit building, right? And let me share with you this. It says true behavior change is identity change. You might start a habit because of motivation, but the only reason you'll stick with one is that it becomes part of your identity. And then it gives an example. The goal is not to read a book. The goal is to become a reader. The goal is not to run a marathon. The goal is to become a runner. The goal is not to learn an instrument. The goal is to become a musician. And, you know, one of my, I guess, habits that I want to continue is YouTube and that's the reason why even though the quality of my videos are not up there the focus right now is quantity because I want to have like I want to build that habit and do every single day to then become not an influencer but I want to build a brand through this YouTube platform. So how can I do that? 
Well, I need to be consistent and build that foundation of continuing. And with this habit, this needs to become a part of my identity. And the other habit that I want to grow in is reading. So just like this bullet point said, the goal is not to read a book, the goal is to become a reader. So I think my goal and my identity shift is to become a reader. So um, I'm taking it really slow, um, just reading about 15 to 30 minutes a day. But the identity shift of AJ is to also learn to become a reader who grows in wisdom through the knowledge that I gained from these books. And it's just like me being an athlete and a runner. It's doing it every single day and me wanting to become an athlete, which is true. That's the identity that I have within myself. I want to be an athlete. What have I been doing all this time? I'm consistent with the gym. I go four or five times a week. I run four times a week, you know? So that's the key. If any of you guys are listening and want to build these habits, it needs to become an identity of yours. You need to want to become that. You need to want to become a runner or a reader or a musician or an athlete. So uh, I encourage you guys to do the same by, by forming these good habits and being consistent just little by little bit. Thank you for watching. Peace.